Over the past 30 years, the school discipline pendulum has swung wildly from one extreme to the other as policymakers have struggled to solve an inherently difficult problem. In the 1990s, so-called zero-tolerance policies were all the rage, but today, these policies are widely viewed as overly punitive, and in the past five years, many states and school districts have revised their discipline policies to encourage or require schools to limit the use of out-of-school suspensions or expulsions in favor of non-punitive responses. Thanks to this shift, the number of out-of-school suspensions in the U.S. has plummeted in recent years, sparking fresh debate about how to best handle discipline in schools. To inform this debate, this study analyzes data from the School District of Philadelphia, which revised its code of conduct in 2012 in an effort to reduce out-of-school suspensions, especially for low-level conduct violations, such as failing to follow classroom rules and using profane language or gestures, which were no longer considered grounds for suspension. There were four big findings. First and most surprisingly, the district's ban on suspensions for less serious violations had no impact on their frequency after the first year of implementation. In fact, as you can see from this pie chart, only 18% of schools fully complied with the ban. Second, changes in the district's suspension policy were linked to improved attendance for students who had previously been suspended. However, there were no significant changes in achievement for these students. Third, students in high-poverty schools who were not suspended during the years of this study experienced worse outcomes, including lower achievement in reading and math. These were also the schools that didn't or couldn't comply with a ban on conduct suspensions. Finally, changing the district suspension policy was linked to an increase in racial disproportionality at the district level. One possible explanation is that some less serious offenses committed by minority students may have been reclassified as more serious offenses as a result of the policy change. As these results demonstrate, schools may respond very differently to district mandates depending on their demographics, achievement levels, and prior suspension rates. Consequently, top-down mandates can have unintended consequences, even when they come from districts, as opposed to states or the federal government. Instead of taking a top-down approach, policymakers should respect the wisdom of practitioners and work with them to find new and better solutions. Discipline reform, however defined or conceptualized, will work best if initiated at the ground level. To learn more, read The Academic and Behavioral Consequences of Discipline Policy Reform, Evidence from Philadelphia, by Matthew Steinberg and Joanna Lacoe at www.edexcellence.net.